Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to part two of our iPhone web service tutorial. Um, so before we get into some iPhone code, I want to show you exactly what the server is going to be doing for, for, our, for our login controller. Okay, so I'm going to pop on over here and here we have some PHP. Uh, it's the same index of PHP file that we're using before, um, but this time if you set a username and a password in the URL and they happen to match the proper credentials, it's going to echo back a JSON array of this user. So this is very, very simple and obviously you would never use anything like this. What you would want to do is you would want to query um, like a MySQL database for this username and for this password and if you get a match then you know that the person is is a valid user and you can you know, take the appropriate action from there. Uh, but for our sakes, we're just keeping this very, very simple. Uh, to show you what this looks like, uh, I have over here, you'll see uh, jukesfm slash tutorial slash index.php, the username and password up here, and this is the formatted JSON of what comes back. So you'll see we have four properties, a first name, a last name, a hash. This is my hashed password in MD5, I think. Uh, and an array of skills. So if you've never seen JSON before, it's pretty simple. Basically curly braces mean object, square braces mean array, and a name with a colon means a key and a value. So first name is the key, Andrew is the value, last name is key, Barbara is the value, and the same thing for down here. So if I said skills here, I would get back this array. So unformatted, it looks like this. All right, so it's a lot nicer than XML, it takes up a lot less space, and uh, you'll find it's much easier to parse too. So that's why it's become pretty much a standard for any AJAX requests and things like that. So let's go ahead and pop back over to our iPhone app here. And what I wanna do is I wanna walk you through the, the login controller. I, I did say that I wasn't going to show you guys how to set it up, but um, I will walk you through it just in case uh, something isn't clear about how I set this up. So first off, just to look at the design, we have a button. This will begin our login. We have a username field. We have a password field. We have three labels. So these labels will all be, um, they'll, they will match the, the JSON array. We have a label down here for the number of skills in the array. And if you click the accessory, that's hooked up with a segue, and those will be listed here in a dynamic table view. So to walk you through that code, we have two files. We have a login table view controller, and we have a skills table view controller. And again, this link is posted. You can download this. So you don't have to try and recreate this on your own. Uh, but let me go ahead and walk you through the implementation file. So our data model is we have a user. Okay, that's what we'll be fetching. Uh, we have some outlets, uh, username, and password, a loader, things like that. Um, more outlets, labels, and here we go. Again, this is our main method. This is what we need to complete. This will actually do the login. Uh, but what's going to happen is when you actually click the login button, it's going to begin login. It's going to call this method up here that we still have to implement. Okay, and if this is successful, hopefully we can set the user, and when we set our user, we're going to update our UI. So when we update our UI, we're going to go ahead and grab these properties out from the returned user. Down here, here's our segue code. So if we click the button and the segue identifier happens to be skills segue, we are going to make a reference to that table view controller and there's a public method on set skills uh, or excuse me on the skills table view controller there's a public method called set skills or basically we set the array and when we do that we set the skills array it reloads the table view data so coming back over here so that'll reload the data and then I'll populate the list with uh, some skills and over here, here's our begin login code. So start the animation, disable the button, take away the keyboard, and login if we have a user. 
uh, we'll log login successful, otherwise we fail the login. Stop the animation, re-enable the login button. And here's a reset UI, which basically just uh, nils out everything. So I believe this actually needs to be a string. I don't think we can say nil. So we'll just say the empty string. And, and login, which stops things up here. And this down here, so scroll view did scroll. So basically, if the keyboard's up and you scroll, just hide the keyboard. That's all that doing. Okay, so that's a pretty simple setup. Uh, hopefully, you guys should be able to do that on your own. But again, if you can't, it's available to download. So let's go ahead and let's implement this login method. We're going to go back to iOS request. And we're going to go ahead and define a new function. And this function, I'm going to call login. So we're going to say login with username. That'll be a string. With username and password. That'll also be a string. And on completion, right? We always need our completion handler so we know when we're done. So I'm actually going to change this. Okay, so I actually want to define a new completion handler and I want this one to be a dictionary because that is essentially uh, what we have over here, right? So this, this JSON here is going to become a native iOS dictionary. So that's what I want our completion handler to be as well. So we're going to call this request uh, dictionary completion handler, excuse me. And all we need here is an NS dictionary. And the reason I'm not using the error case, basically if the dictionary is nil, that means there was an error. Um, if it's not nil, that means it was successful. So we can go down here, we'll put in request dictionary completion handler. Okay. So that looks good. And let's go ahead and implement that. So let's do login. We'll clean up the spacing here. Okay, so now this is where the fun begins. So first off, we need to make sure that we escape the username and password. And to do that, we're actually going to put a category on NS string uh, called URL encode. And what categories are? They basically allow me to add methods to built-in classes without subclassing. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new file. And this will be an Objective C category. It'll be on NS string. That's what we're going to be working with right now. I'm going to call it Web Service. I'll hit next. Create. Replace. I must have had it in there already. Okay. And this is going to be on an instance of an NS string. That's why it's the minus sign, not the plus. And we're going to call it URL and code. And while I'm at it, we're also going to need something that parses JSON. So I'm going to go ahead and add the JSON method here as well. So let's go ahead and implement these. So URL and code. I'm actually going to cheat. Uh, I already have it typed out over here. And I'm just going to copy and paste it. Okay, so this uses some lower level API. I'm not going to explain it right now, but essentially it replaces, it replaces these characters with the appropriate equivalent uh, safe, safe for, for URL. Okay, so again, I'm not going to explain it right now, but trust me, it works. And we're going to go ahead and make our JSON array. Okay, so this is how we're going to parse parse some JSON. So first, we need the the string to become an NS data because that's how the built-in parser works. So we're going to say self data using encoding, and we're going to use NS UTF-8 string encoding. Now we're going to return an NS JSON serialization class, JSON object with data. Options no. Oh, excuse me. 
And I'm not going to worry about the error right now. You guys can choose to do that. Uh, what I am going to do, though, is make this have mutable leaves and a mutable container. Basically what that says is once we get our JSON object back, can we change things inside of it? So I want to be able to do that. Uh, even though in this tutorial we will not be changing things, but um, just to show you guys how this works, I figured I'd keep it in. So NSJSON serialization is built in as of iOS 5. You can certainly use third-party libraries if you'd like, but I think this is a pretty uh, clean and nice way to do it. So now that we have this implemented, we're going to go over here. We're going to say username equals, oh, we're not going to do this quite yet. First, we have to import this. All right, we have to import our category. So there's our web service category. So username equals username, URL, and code, and password equals password, URL, and code. Okay, so those are good to go. Now let's build an NS string base path. So basically, where do you want this API call to go? So for us, we're going to HTTP colon slash slash jukes.fm slash tutorial slash index.php. Okay, now let's build the full path. So the full path equals an S string. Oh, actually we can do base path string by appending format. It's basically it's going to allow us to just append some things to the current string. So username, password, and we're going to append username equals percent at and password equals percent at. So that'll give us our full our full URL. You'll if you remember that this mass matches exactly what I typed in before to get that JSON. Alright, so now from here, it's quite simple. We're actually going to use the method that we defined right above. We're going to say iOS request request to path, full path. And on completion, we're going to get an NS string result, which in our case will hopefully be a JSON array. Okay. Now let's go ahead and let's. So, first thing we want to do, we want to see if there's an error or if the result is equal to the empty string. We know that login failed, right? So, here login failed. Alright, now what we're going to do is we're going to call our completion handler, but we're going to call it with nil. All right, so that'll tell the server so implementing this method that uh, it failed and there's there's nothing to return. Um, but on the other hand, if it passed, we're going to make that dic that dictionary that I was talking about. So we're going to say result and use our JSON method that's defined in the string category. And we're going to go ahead and return that. All right, so if you remember, this is the dictionary completion handler. So that's why here, when I call complete, I'm passing in a dictionary. Whereas up here, this is a request completion handler, which takes in a string and an error. So I hope you guys understand the difference between those. All right, so this is actually good to go. So we're going to go back to our login view controller. And what we're going to do is we're going to call it right here. So we are going to say iOS request, which I did not import. Excuse me. Don't forget to import. So iOS request, login with username, username, password, password on completion. NS dictionary user. Okay, so that looks okay to me. Um, but as you should know, we're missing one thing, right? Grand Central Dispatch here. We have to update the UI, so we have to make sure that we do that on the main thread. And what we're going to do, we're going to self, we're going to set our user. 
So set user to the returned user. And we can go ahead and say we are done logging in. Okay, so when we call set user here, what that's doing is that's setting this user up here. Okay, technically I could say self.user equals user, but I'm using the actual method here. Um, and the reason I'm doing that, just to show you that this is clear, that when we actually set the user, it automatically updates the UI right here. So that's what's happening there. So let's go ahead and let's run this. Let's see what happens. Okay, so let's go to login. Okay, so you'll see it failed to log in. Now let's type in proper credentials. So iOS tutorial. Oh, I might have spelled that wrong actually. No, oh, no, I didn't. Okay, so login successfully. You see that down here. You got my first name, you got my last name, you got my hash, the number of skills. If I click this, you notice this is populated. If I go back, uh, you can see, so if I get the password wrong, I hit login, it resets these because it knows it failed. Okay guys, so that is my iOS web service tutorial. Uh, hopefully uh, you guys learned a few things. I'm sure I did not explain things as clearly as I should have, so please leave comments. Hopefully I'll do another video to clear up some things that might not make perfect sense to people. Again, links are there. Go download the starter project. Um, you can download the finished project as well, although I really don't like putting up links to finished projects because you guys should be following the tutorial anyway. Um, yeah, so actually, now that I think about it, the finished link might not be there. We'll have to see. But yeah, okay, hope you guys enjoyed. Have fun and uh, let me know what you thought. Thank you.